our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I am AJ, your host, and I have the wonderful pleasure of having my co-host, Paul Avato, with me. Paul, how are you? I'm wonderful. This is fantastic. Always great to see you, AJ. And Chelsea, as always, also great to see you. Yes, and we have a fabulous guest tonight, um, Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea Makala. She is an actress, talent manager um, from dis representing Discover Management. Uh, she's also um, had a, pr a recent production that you can see on the screen, Events, we're going to talk about, uh, releasing February 15th on Apple TV. We're going to speak about her other current projects, and uh, we're just going to start right in on it. Hello, Chelsea, and welcome. Hey, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. We are thrilled to have you. Isn't that right, Paul? A hundred percent. I'm so <laughs> looking forward to this all day. This is our second show. We get a meet here virtually. Um, you know, I just want to say, um, Chelsea, you have done some amazing um, productions. You've been an actress. You've been on both sides of it. So you have that advantage of um, wonderful perspectives, knowing right on set on the production and behind the scenes and also the talent uh, literary. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and um, your perspective on it and what the advantages are? Yeah, uh, so I am the head of the literary department at Discover Management, and then I also manage a select group of actors and entertainers uh, and artists. And so it's an amazing transition from being an actor and being managed by our owner, Deborah Lynn, at Discover Management, and then getting the opportunity when Discover was expanding and uh, she was bringing on managers and that was becoming my passion and wanting to move to the business side of entertainment and her offering, you know, that opportunity um, and being mentored by her to move into that side. Uh, so being able to offer to help people's dreams and wanting to go after their careers. So being a part of the creative side, but also the business side um, and not having to give up the creativity of the entertainment industry. And so still being able to see all of that and um, in some way or another be a part of it. And so not having to leave uh, entertainment altogether, you know, and so I love it. It's an immersive job and that's what I love to that do. That is amazing. That, yeah. that is so amazing. And would you like to do a shout out to a few of your clients? Well, Paul, of course, thank you so much for inviting me and introducing me to AJ. Um, I am so fortunate to have met him and for us to be able to work together. And then um, Events is a project that one of my other clients wrote, co-wrote, and is a producer. Uh, he's the executive producer and director on. And I got to, uh, in working with him, become a producer and help co uh, creatively develop that and just help with the guidance uh, as he was directing and writing and on set. And so that was an amazing project that is on pre-order right now on Apple TV. And then I have, I mean, I'm so fortunate to be working with so many clients. Um, I have, I just met and just started working with Hillary Powers, who um, is an amazing, actress, script supervisor. She's a life coach. She is just an all around entertainer and just a powerhouse of a woman. Um, but she started her career as uh, Sally in the Charlie Brown um, Peanuts show, which later mm -hmm. went on to, you know, become movies and comic, I mean, sorry, as a comic strip. And so I'm very fortunate, like I said, to just come across so many clients. I have Laprice Roman, who just, she had two movies come out and mm -hmm. Christy Kate, who is well known for um, voiceover and she's doing acting and writing. And so I have some 
amazing, amazing clients, Christy and Caitlin Kleppinger, um, Jacob Seidman and Julie Phillips who collaborate. Wow. And so it's just to name everybody would be just yeah. going and going, but um, I'm very, very fortunate. Uh, Talita Real, Jacob, I said Jacob Simon, Press Troche, Troy, uh, my client who will be um, on Bel Air that is coming out this mm -hmm. month, the Fresh Prince remake. And so I just, I'm very fortunate. To Congratulations. Well, you, they're so blessed to have you as a talent manager. Wouldn't you say so, Paul? Over to you. I would I would say that 100 percent. We, we are very fortunate. The ones that get to work uh, uh, with with uh, Chelsea. I mean, it's it's amazing uh, the what, what she does and goes above and beyond the call of duty to you know get us into shape for for, for, for this crazy uh, career that we've chosen. So, yeah, it's wonderful. To be able to work with her, yeah, hundred percent. You guys push me. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, they they push me. They come with me to with ideas to me that I want to you know give feedback, and they will give feedback, and I end up being up thinking of more. <laughs> Amazing! I love that. It's a great synergy. It's a wonderful relationship, and um, I'm so happy for everybody. Um, that is represented by you and also for Paul and you. I wanted to ask you, uh, Chelsea, um, what is your greatest achievement so far? Oh God. Um, I think I always go in my personal life, it would have to, and it's not so much an achievement, but just an overcoming. And I, at the time, I didn't think of it as an achievement, but looking back, I overcame the uh, the obstacles that were put in front of me of overcoming and I I guess defeating a uh, pediatric brain cancer. And that's so much of what molded me into the way of how I see the world and see things as an adult now, or I guess, you know, where I am in my life now. Um, and- That's amazing. That is incredible. Yeah. And I think that feeds into my career and how I work. You're unstoppable, Chelsea, you're <laughs> unstoppable. And so I don't see many things as undefeatable or unattainable just because I think there's always something, another way or another road or another, you know, way of thinking of things because um, I was told so young that, you know, this is undefeatable or so many people don't live through this or, you know, there's only a 5% chance. And my family was very much of the mindset, well, why can't she be that 5%? And so when I hear, you know, only 2% of the people make this or get there, then I'm like, well, my clients will just be that 2%, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I love that. I love that. And that resilience and that uh, good energy and that never give up spirit that you have, Chelsea, is what sets you apart and makes you unique. That is yours and yours alone and your style. And I love that. Don't you, Paul? I, I, yeah. I mean, it's, it's mind blowing that, you know, what the, the human body can, can withstand and overcome and accomplish. And then, uh, and, and you're right. You know, a lot of times we see things and we're like, oh my God, I can't, this can't, you know, I'm not going to make it, you know, because such few, especially in this in this industry. But then to, to know the way Chelsea uh, 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 thinks, it's it's amazing. I mean, uh, that that you were able to defeat that and being just such a small percentage and still being able to to not only defeat it, but then go on to be successful and and all that. So, wow, that's I think it's a, it's a great story of inspiration and motivation. So thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think so many people have stories and, you know, everybody comes up against something that they're defeating or overcoming or overcame. And that's part of the reason why I love literary. So many people share their stories with you. And I love that I have been given and what, you know, Deborah Lynn allowed me to work with and discover to help people share their stories. And so it's amazing the things I hear and are, you know, sent. And I, I always try to find some kind of way to help people when I can. That's, that's amazing. That's me. Uh, how long have you been with Discover Management? Uh, I don't remember if I asked you this when, when we first connected, but uh, 
uh, how did, uh, I mean, she was your manager. And then when she opened up the, uh, and started expanding, is that when she, uh, th that's when you came in. So how long ago was that? And then did you just start out with literary and then, and then transfer also as well as to managing some of the other clients? Sorry. Let's see. So tech, it's been over 10 years, 10 years okay. now. Um, and then there was just a point in time where, you know, I didn't feel that that feeling that I had always felt for acting where I was like, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do this and I'm excited to get auditions and I'm excited to even like book things. I just started losing that slowly. And I was more excited to see how like the, my publicist was managing things at that time and how Deborah Lynn was managing things. I was more excited to go into the office and like sit there and watch her do things and I was finding myself so interested in that side of the business and more excited to just, like I said, like go in and watch everything and learn. And she, we had a meeting one day and I was explaining this to her. And that's when she said, well, here's what I'm doing. You know, why don't we start talking about the possibility of this and I'll teach you. And I, I was hesitant because it was something I had worked on my whole life to build this career as an actress and then yeah. all of a sudden in a moment to be like yeah sure I'll just leave it all <laughs> you know and become a manager she you know felt that hesitation and she was like think about it and while you're thinking about it we can teach you and I was like okay all right that's fine and I was working on a script at the time with one of my co-writers and we were already in there writing and building things and stuff like that. And so I was in there already and I was like, well, what if I started a literary department? And she was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we just start a whole new department. And she goes, and then I think I surprised her. And so it became this mentorship of like, okay, if we're gonna do this, we need to do this right. We're not just gonna start a whole no new department. Like, so it was a little bit of a mentorship for about two two years inside before we announced everything. And um, really me learning from people who already had um, departments or who were literary uh, lawyers and things like that and who really knew what they were doing. So that way, when we did go public, um, I knew what I was doing. She knew more about how to help me with questions in the literary world. And we were really prepared for what we were doing. Um, and so I was managing for a while and then we announced the literary side and then the pandemic happened. So <laughs> we all went remote, um, but it was, it was all in good timing and everything's been wonderful. I truly, truly am so blessed to have her and so happy. I'm so happy for you. This is a wonderful win-win situation as well. What is what is it that you love about the literary world um, versus the acting world? I love to see it all come together. I mean, some things can literally just be, it's funny because some stories are so complete and obvious why they should be a story. It's already written itself. And some things are just, it will, clients will be in meetings and it'll be like a joke that we've said or something funny that's come across in a conversation that's like a side note of a story. And then all of a sudden we have a new script that's like, wait, what did you just say? That's funny. Here's the character or here's the log line, write it down. And this should be something, there's something there. And then two weeks later, we're writing on a whole new story or theme or something. And it's so cool to watch those stories develop or that character develop. And then you have a character that has a whole, whole world being written around them. Um, and that's really cool to watch come to life. And then you watch things on TV and it make you watch TV in a whole new way because you go, how did that get there? You know, I wonder how that happened or this. And 
you start watching things in a new way, just like actors do. You know, you wonder, oh, I auditioned for that. I wonder how they ended up with this actor. Or, you know, you, you're you so excited to watch shows that you auditioned for and see what they ended up doing with the character or who they cast, you know, writers. And I, I watch television so differently. And then I'll talk to my clients and be like, did you see that? Did you see that theme or this theme <laughs> and these characters? We we should like create something or do something with the plot written out like that. And so y- your mind is just thinking constantly. That's wonderful. And Paul, did you want to ask um, Chelsea uh, another question? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much we can talk about, about certain projects, but I'm excited uh, to always hear. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, you probably might want to mention uh, Chelsea had a great article uh, in what was that magazine or the the, the electronic magazine maybe Chelsea uh, that that mentioned I, th- I think now there's been several but uh, they were also kind enough to to mention your to mention my name or they LA went they Wire. went through they roster were, they were wonderful yes well wow, LA Wire cool. that's congratulations. That's amazing. And um, when was that? Where can we see that? That was in January. And they were, I didn't know they were going to do this. Um, They did an article on me. And they just said, where can we find your roster? And I said, oh, you know, on IMDb. And then I, you know, my clients follow me and I follow them. And they said, great. And you know, do you want to, we're going to mention your clients. Do you want to handpick them? And I said, no, absolutely not. Like, <laughs> I am not handpicking my clients. You mentioned like, no. <laughs> and they said, okay, then we're, we're mentioning your clients. So, you know, just to give you a heads up. And I said, okay. And they said, can you at least tell us, you know, who's doing what most currently? So I literally sent them a list of my whole roster and the most current projects and links and stuff. And then I just let it go. And I was, you know, most like I was anticipating like, who would they mention? I wonder, I wonder. And it came out and they they mentioned like uh, 10 or 12 of my clients. Mm -hmm. And so it was so funny because when they called me, they're like, thank you so much. I'm like, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to. everybody uh, in and they picked. <laughs> I didn't want to uh, pick. I didn't want to be the one. Um, I sent everyone in. So. <laughs> well, in that case, I retract my thanks <laughs> to you. And I'm going to call LA Wire and thank them for putting me in there. No, of course, but but you, you, you gave us the, at least the opportunity to be in there. And I think that's what, you know, that's what great managers do. Of course, I, I guess maybe we're like your kids. You don't want to pick favorites. I don't want to pick favorites. But no. if you did have to pick, would I be one of your favorites? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, I love uh, you all equally. <laughs> that's what my parents used to lie and say. Absolutely. Yeah. I would take my mom aside and she would say, well, I've loved you longer. And I was like, well, yeah, but I'm a year and a half older than ever. She was exactly I loved you longer. So that's a great answer. <laughs> yeah, it's a great answer. But that's no, awesome. of course, uh, it was an honor to be mentioned in the same article as 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 Chelsea. So that was Oh, you are so kind. Congratulations. Oh, wow. So this is wonderful. So I do want to mention, uh, Chelsea, that you were in dance flicks um as an actress uh with the Wayan brothers, right? Um yes. and and then also, you've also got the production Bothered. Can you tell us, uh, it's new media, Can you new web media. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, uh, Bothered, we, we started back in season one um, doing, it was on Sika TV, which at the time was an online platform that great, really believed in the indie artists and indie filmmakers and giving them an audience and a voice. And we didn't know, but shortly after we started collaborating with them, they uh, launched with Apple TV's new um, new media content. Wow. And they took us on with them. And so Bothered is a hilarious, uh, well, I think it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> new it's new media there um about they it's each episode runs um you different lengths it's new media web series and we're on apple tv we'll be launching on roku they just partnered with roku as well and um sika tv is online but spark media is their umbrella company and you can watch it on Apple, you can download the app and watch it on Apple TV now. And uh, soon in about two months on Roku as well, or you can watch it on your computer at Sika.tv. Um, and it's, it's uh, Julie Phillips is the writer and um, she's the creator writer and then Emerson Niemczyk is the co-creator and he directs a lot of the episodes and they're just all about bringing all perspectives of comedy and they bring co-collaborators on and it's hilarious we uh, are releasing the second season march 3rd and then we have already been picked up for the third season to wow. launch um, outside of sika where you know they let indie creators and then apple is who's kind of allowing you know what and where uh they're who they're gonna launch onto their new media platforms and so we've already been greenlit for that that's awesome and um that that uh, is truly amazing and and so also evinced um did you want to uh tell us a, what is the is it a thriller it, it looks like an action-oriented uh feature film so it is a sci-fi like fantasy action thriller it's about a time traveler who starts telling people in current time warnings of what is going to happen and Ooh. what they need to do to avoid kind of chaos in current day, how they can make different choices to avoid things. And it's all about what would you do? What would we do as the audience if we got that chance? to make a different decision to avoid, you know, different chaos or different tragedies or different political kind of thriller things. Would we listen to the future if we knew, would we listen to somebody from the future or would we kind of blow it off? Like, oh, this is just a social media hoax or this is just a YouTuber or, inst you know, an influencer trying to mess with us. Would we really take it seriously? at this point in you know current day with so many social media platforms and so many people trying to get followers how would we know if it were somebody real from the future um if, so how would we vet them how would we exactly vet and that's what this is all about you know if time travel were real how would we ever know with so many people saying or you know trying to trick with social media oh i'm from the future because you see them all over TikTok, you know time travelers and this and that and so how would we know if somebody were actually from the future trying to warn us? And um, this I is love it. I love it. It's I love a this. real time traveler warning. And people don't take it seriously until so many things uh, start uh, aligning. I love it. I love the story. I love time travel. Don't you, Paul? I absolutely do. And I've been watching a lot of sci-fi. I mean, I, on, the, on the flight from Florida here, I watched Dune. And, uh, and there's several other programs that, that I've watched, uh, you know, where you can download your conscious, you know, and, and, and reprogram <laughs> yeah, yeah. it. And I, 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 was, I was thinking like, I mean, that, I guess that's what, you know, now, uh, you know, a Meta or Facebook announced, you know, that they're using avatars. I'm like, so, I mean, how much different is it to make this avatar and then program it to talk like you and, you know, be snarky <laughs> like I am, and then it can live on forever. Like, oh, I feel like talking to Vato. And here's his avatar just making dumb jokes. You know, you're like, oh, that's him. I remember, you know. So I, I love uh, all of these sci-fi and fantasy. So I can't wait to watch it. And I'm glad to know that that you know, you, you're it's your project really, and and that's that's Thank wonderful. You. Yeah, I love sci-fi and like you know futuristic stuff and just making you think like, oh, well, you know, where are we going? What's what if the future looks like this? And with science and technology especially virtual reality. It's also sure. interesting. Oh, I love it too. And I do want to ask one more question. Um, and, and Paul, then you can ask whatever you want. Um, 
I, I do have this question that's really pressing. It's important to me. Uh, Chelsea, can you tell us what your pet peeves about the industry are or what changes are needed, please? Oh, um, pet peeves or changes. I think we're headed down a really good path as far as changes. Um, when I was an actress in my younger years, like around dance flick, I weighed, you know, closer to 300 pounds at the time. And so I was very boxed in into, you know, I was only this type of character in these types of roles. And like I maybe one or two times in my whole 15, 16 years of being an actress went out for a lead because that's just not, that wasn't an option at that time in the industry. Whereas now we see breakdowns and I see breakdowns for my clients where it's, it'll say, you know, we don't care what ethnicity, what body type, you know, for both men and women, or, you know, however you identify, we just want somebody who fits this personality, who fits how this character is written. We want to see everybody for this. And I think that is so important because there are so many talented people who should be reading for those parts because, everybody is, you know, sees a lead differently in the world. A leading person can be anyone. We all view people for their character and their heart in the world, not just one body type. And so I think that was a big pet peeve of mine as an actress. I would watch so many leading characters and be like, I should have read for that. That is my personality. That is, you know, I could have fit that. And I love that that is changing in the industry, that they're opening it up to uh, more actresses and actors who are so talented and can fit that character. I love that. And I'm so happy that it is changing. Um, and thank you for being an innovative leader in the literary world for the film and TV industry. You're amazing. Paul, over to you. Well, uh, I, you know, and this might be a question that's just, that, that's too why but uh what i and i but i think it'll help people because everybody uh, i think the number one question is you know what should i be doing as an actor to make your job easier is there a, and i guess it also goes you know uh, i'm glad that the industry is opening and everything that you said uh chelsea but uh yeah if, is there something what should we as actors be doing to make your job easier uh and moving forward or you know a piece of advice like that you're so good at this, Paul. Uh, <laughs> branding. <laughs> it is so much Brand. easier when you know who you are rather than changing to a trend of trying to become somebody else who already knows their brand and thinking, oh, well, this person has, you know, 300,000 followers or 15 million followers, so I should copy them. No, that person is successful because they know who they are. And that's why people want to hear from them. They like the authenticity of that person. They like how organic they are because that person knows who they are. So let's focus in on who you are so you can show the world who you are, what you like about you. Be organic, be the authentic you and focus in on that. Don't copy somebody else who is successful at being themselves. Um, and I always tell my clients when they're getting headshots, don't, you know, a look is not throwing on like a doctor's uniform or, you know, I'm happy. Like it's when you're the most confident version of you, that's what's going to shine through. And it's all about when you're the most confident and authentic version of you that will show through to casting, that will show through to your followers in the world. And that's who people wanna ultimately see on television or film. And you're great at it, Paul. Um, that is why you are so successful. And absolutely, I mean, truly a hundred percent. That is why people are so attracted to all of your media, all of your socials, because you figured out you and yeah. grow with you. And so I always tell people, whatever is your most confident, be that. I don't care if it's different than what social media tells you to be, be you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you.
Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you for you sharing. So much. Yeah, yes. I love that. And Paul, we love Paul, don't we? Paul, you're great. You, you're um, you're amazing. I'm so honored that you are doing this with me. Um, you're my co-host, but um, you're very much so much a part of this show. And uh, I'm so honored to work with you each and every show. It's just an uh, absolute pleasure, Paul. Um, you 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 raise you raise me up. You help me, so I can't do it without you. And I I love it. So thank you so I know. much. I know. I know. I know. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Like that, just like that Chicago song, you know, I can't do it alone, you know, right? So <laughs> that's it. That's it. Chicago, where we don't got an accent. That's it. Chicago. Absolutely right. Well, I'm so sorry to say that um, our show is coming uh, to a close in a few minutes. So how can people get in contact with you, Chelsea? How can they support you? Uh, the mic is over to you. Um, I would say my social media is Chelsea Macla, and you just spell it Make LA, um, and on Instagram, and you can follow me on my personal one or my production company, which is Make LA Productions, and we just announced that probably a month and a half ago, so. I have both Instagrams and uh, my personal one I see, and then the other um, Make LA Productions, our team sees, but I peek in on it. So please follow both. And I will get back to you on any messages that are sent to Chelsea Makala at Chelsea Makala. It just may take me a few days or a little bit, but I see them all and I will get back to you, I promise. And um, for business inquiries, you can always email uh, the production company and um, of course, Discover Management. I always see those and I will always, you know, for business and any press or anything like that, we uh, welcome any business inquiries of any kind. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Chelsea. You have been an amazing guest. And Paul, thank you so much as well. And I just want to say to everybody out there, until we meet again. (laughs) Thank you so much, both of you. This has been wonderful. I need a fan. Thank you, Chelsea. (laughs) Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.